Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are going to look into the execution of Fazad Buzoft, a story of international diplomacy, numerous wars, a totalitarian authoritarian regime, journalism, espionage, and political interests in which Fazad Bazoft was merely a pawn as one of only a handful of Britons to be executed since Britain's last execution in 1964. He was ultimately failed by the British government and executed under the regime of Saddam Hussein. Born in Iran, Bazoft left his homeland when he was 16 in 1975 to complete his education. He was sentenced to 18 months in jail after robbing at gunpoint the Heart of England Building Society, now part of Lloyds Bank, in Brackley, Northamptonshire in 1981. His sentence included a deportation order, however facing the possibility of execution and torture following the Iranian Revolution in Iran, which ended on the 11th of February 1979, Bazoft was allowed to stay in the United Kingdom. The Iranian Revolution saw the overthrow of the Palvian dynasty and the Iranian monarchy with the creation of the Islamic Republic of Iran. After finishing his education, Bazoft commenced a career as a freelance journalist, including working for the Observer newspaper and the BBC, primarily writing articles on the Middle East, particularly on the Iran-Iraq War. The Iran-Iraq War between the 22nd of September 1980 and the 20th of August 1988 was an invasion by Iraq attempting to annex Iranian territories and bolster Arab separatism in the Khuzestan province of Iran while Iran attempted to topple the government of Saddam Hussein and destroy Iraqi military power. The war saw as many as 600,000 Iraqi and 500,000 Iranian soldiers killed, with more than 100,000 civilians killed. The war only ended when Iran accepted a UN-brokered ceasefire under UN Secretary Council Resolution 598. Bazov's opposition to the Khomeini regime fostered a strong relationship with the Iraqi government officials and he was invited five times to Iraq in order to view the impacts of the Iran-Iraq war. He was never part of the Observer or the BBC's full-time staff, nor paid a retainer by either organisation as he was a freelance journalist. Bazoft personified a determined, gumptious, and exotic foreign correspondent with dreams of being similar to Washington Post journalists Bob Woodward and Carl Bernstein, who uncovered the Watergate scandal, and his favourite film was The Killing Fields, about foreign correspondents being killed in Pol Pot-run Cambodia. In September 1989, Bazoft was invited by Saddam Hussein's government, along with other foreign journalists, to cover Kurdistani elections in Iraq. Before leaving, Bazoft learnt about a mysterious explosion that took place approximately one month before at the Al Iskandaria military complex, 31 miles south of Baghdad, the capital of Iraq. Saddam Hussein ordered to keep the matter a secret. However, rumours began to spread that the accident happened in a rocket factory's assembly line, killing dozens of Egyptian technicians involved in Iraq's secret development of medium-range ballistic missiles, with the New York Times reporting that hundreds of Egyptian technicians had been killed. Bazoft sensed that this could be the exclusive of a lifetime and convinced British nurse and friend Daphne Parrish, who was based in Baghdad at the time, to drive to the al Hilar military complex 40 miles south of Baghdad, allegedly informing Iraqi authorities of his trip. Other reporters, including a camera crew from ITN, attempted to make their way to al Hilar military complex but were stopped at checkpoints, with their film confiscated. Bazoft took 34 photographs of the area of al Hilar and soil to test, and was driven back by Parish to Baghdad. Bazoft asked military personnel in Baghdad hotels and casinos what they knew and was reported by hotel security to Hussein's main state intelligence organization, the Iraqi Intelligence Service. Bazoft also told 
fellow reporters who, concerned for his safety and the viciousness of Hussein's totalitarian regime, advised him to leave the country. Bazoft headed to Baghdad Airport and was due to board an Iraqi Airways flight to London Gatwick Airport on the evening of 15 September. He was stopped by the Mukhabarad secret police who found 34 photographs and soil from al Hilal in his bag. He was sent to the Abu Ghraib prison with Parish also arrested. Bazoft was tortured and beaten for six weeks in the maximum security Abu Ghraib prison. 32 kilometers west of Baghdad. Hussein held political prisoners in this hellhole where torturing and extrajudicial killings took place with mass graves discovered at the site following the United States and her allies invading Iraq in 2003. With Iraqi authorities accusing Bazoft of being a British spy, observer, editor and future chief executive David Trelford told the media he is a reporter who went to do a story this is not the action of a spy. Having been tortured for six weeks, Bazoft was placed in front of TV cameras on the 1st of November 1989 and confessed to being an Israeli spy, despite Iraqi officials initially noting that he was a British spy. He attempted to convince Parrish to claim that she was a spy, believing that this would save her life but she refused. Colleagues at The Observer, including Trelford, noted that he was unrecognisable during his TV confession, appeared to be drugged and exhausted, and had lost a significant amount of weight. Bazoft was put on trial, with foreign journalists' attendance prohibited, and his British-appointed QC not allowed to attend. British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher was informed by Hussein that Bazoft and Parrish would get a fair trial. Despite no evidence of his guilt, Bazoft was sentenced to death on the 10th of March 1990, following a one-day trial, with Parrish sentenced to 15 years in jail. Neither had the right to appeal. At face value, the British government attempted to free Bazoft from hanging, with Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher speaking strongly out against the pending execution and Foreign Secretary Douglas Heard offering to go to Baghdad to negotiate for Bazoff's life. However, in many ways, this turned out to be nothing more than crocodile tears and a facade at best. Fellow Conservative MP and proponent of capital punishment, Terry Dix, MP for Haynes and Harlington, stated that Bazoft deserves to be hanged. Conservative MP Rupert Allison, MP for Torbay in Devon, bizarrely noted that Bazoft was a spy because the name of an Israeli businessman was in Bazoft's address book. This erroneous claim led the front pages of several British newspapers. Chief Secretary Norman Lamont told The Observer newspaper in 2017, There was some argument about how British he was. He did have an Iranian passport, and that was the decisive thing. He wasn't a British citizen, perhaps explaining the inaction of the British Conservative government in attempting to save Bazoff's life. Just five days after his sentence, Bazoft was executed by hanging at 6.30am Baghdad time on the 15th of March 1990. His final words were, I was just a journalist going after a scoop. He left letters for his family and friends, as well as letters apologising to Parrish. British Council General in Baghdad, Robin Kelly, was informed just one hour prior to Bazoff's execution that he would be killed with Bazoft himself unaware of his pending death. He was sent back in a wooden box with the chilling message from an Iraqi official, Mrs. Thatcher wanted him, we've sent him in a box. Bazoft was buried at Highgate Cemetery in London with the following words on his tombstone, I hope the world will decide after I've gone what kind of person I have really been. It is a shame to die without the world having heard the whole truth. The Thatcher government refused to take out any sanctions or actions against the Iraqi government following Bazoff's execution. State files released in 2017 demonstrated why the state was so reluctant to intervene, with Foreign Secretary Douglas Hurd noting it would be bad for our interests and would cause disproportionate damage to UK industry due to the considerable commercial presence to protect in Iraq. Having been sentenced to 15 years in prison, Parrish was released on the 16th of July 1990 and flown back to Gatwick Airport following a plea for clemency from Hussein supporter and loyalist Zambian President Kenneth Kayunda. 
Only a few weeks later, Iraq would invade her neighbour, Kuwait, on the 2nd of August 1990, initiating the first Gulf War, with America and her allies, including Britain, fighting against the Hussein regime as part of Operation Desert Storm. The war ended on the 28th of February 1991, after six months and three weeks, with Iraqi forces forced out of Kuwait. 4,200 Kuwaiti soldiers were killed, 292 coalition soldiers were killed, as many as 50,000 Iraqi soldiers were killed, over 1,000 Kuwaiti civilians were killed, with about 3,664 Iraqi civilians killed. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.